Hello there, I thought it was time for a bit of a skincare update given many of us seem to have had a skin first focus during lockdown. I'll run you through the products I apply to start the day, then talk you through my current evening skincare routine too. My skin is normal to dry and I get hormonal breakouts around my chin and jawline. This might look like a lot of products, but my everyday routine is actually fairly straightforward. Some key steps are always in my routine, then I build in other elements and swap things in and out depending on how my skin is feeling. The pillars of my morning routine are deodorant, cleanser, mist, moisturizer, and SPF. And my key evening steps when I want to go back to basics are just cleanser, mist, moisturizer, and face oil. I do add more from there, but it's always about tuning into what my skin actually needs, doing a mini diagnosis, and adjusting my routine accordingly. I always want to reinforce that I'm by no means an expert, and everyone's skin and skin type is so different, so I'm not qualified to give advice or recommendations. I can only share some information and my personal experience with these products. That's even more important to consider when your skin is misbehaving like mine has been recently. I've heard from so many of you who faced surprise skin troubles this year too whether it's down to mask wearing or general stress. The most difficult and frustrating bit is that there can be so many causes, it's hard to work out what's triggering it. Stress, diet and lifestyle changes, general health, hormones, climate and change of seasons, lack of hydration, lack of sleep, too much sugar, too much skincare experimentation. Every single one of those probably applies to me, so although I'll be talking you through how I'm trying to get my skin back on track, remember that a more holistic approach is definitely going to be beneficial in the long run. No point pouring money into skincare solutions if you're not looking after yourself in other ways too. Let's start with the first product we all put on every single day, deodorant. This section of the video is in paid partnership with Nate. It's a pleasure to be working with them again. I've been using their natural deodorant since February and I've loved hearing from many of you who are big fans of their formula and scents too. If you're new to Native, they're a cruelty-free vegan brand from San Francisco with aluminium-free, paraben-free and sulfate-free formulas. Natural ingredients like coconut oil and shea butter create a really smooth feel. Lots of scent options. Coconut and vanilla is very popular. I'm a fan of eucalyptus and mint, but cucumber and mint is my absolute favorite. It smells delicious so fresh. There's a light sweetness to it, like a cold glass of water with slices of cucumber and mint. I've been using this tube for nearly six months straight and I've still got a bit to go. The trick to a non-sticky, comfortable feel is applying a lot less than you think. I used to stand there half asleep, swiping endlessly, but Native recommends two to three swipes total. Didn't think that would be enough for me, but I still smell fresh at the end of each day and after an at-home workout. Three Native deodorants are usually $36 US dollars, but they're offering them to you for $24. That's 33% off and free US shipping using the code MATILDA2. Head to the link below. The brand ships to the US, UK, Canada, Brazil, France, Germany and Australia so I'd love to hear if you use them too. Off to the bathroom to start my morning skincare. I usually just splash my face with cold water but lately I've been enjoying a gentle morning cleanser. For the past month I've been trying and loving Glow Recipes Blueberry Bounce Cleanser. It's so refreshing, foams up well, makes my face feel soft and it comes in a mini which is a great way to test out anything new. Glow Recipes Fruity Skincare Family is strongly scented and this one doesn't bother me but it's also not my favourite, a bit of a fake blueberry candy scent. After patting my skin dry, I'll lightly mist it with something nice and soothing like Avene's Eau Thermale Mist. You can spot this in my French Pharmacy Favourites video. Having damp skin will help the next products absorb. One of my morning steps that seems to be improving the appearance of my cranky skin lately is a vitamin C serum. They brighten your complexion, even out texture, and help to fade dark spots or scarring that hangs around on me long after a spot heals. I've used the Summer Fridays CC Me Serum for the past few months. I really like the light, silky texture, it's not too tacky, and my skin had been looking more even and bright, but then I swapped to Glow Recipes Pineapple C Brightening Serum and instantly noticed a difference. Those post-spot red marks had faded dramatically overnight and a few weeks on it keeps improving. Quite different to summer Fridays, this is much more watery and you just pat two drops into the skin. Strongly scented again, an intense pineapple that reminds me of pineapple zuper duper ice blocks for any Aussies watching. Moving on to moisturizer and because it's winter in Australia my skin needs a bit more hydration so I've swapped out my usual Glossier Priming Moisturizer for the famous French Embryolisse Lay Creme Concentré. It's pretty similar 
similar, a light moisturizer that makes my skin look fresh and glowy, but this one has a slightly thicker texture, so it's a better winter pick for me. My final skincare step every single day is sunscreen. I'm like a broken record with sun protection. It's so important to have SPF in your daily routine, rain or shine, because UV rays can still cause damage through clouds. Let's prevent those fine lines, dark spots, and skin cancer. My favorite Australian formula, Ultraviolet Supreme Screen SPF 50, is the most non-sunscreen sunscreen I've ever used. Like a smooth, creamy moisturizer, it absorbs so nicely and gives my skin a healthy, hydrated glow. Make sure you always apply enough SPF to get the protection written on the bottle though. The general rule I follow is a teaspoon to cover your face and neck. Quick bit of lip balm to finish. I've been loving Fenty's Pro Kisser Luscious Lip Balm lately. This is like a more lightweight, creamy version of one of my favorite glossy balms, the By Terry Balm de Rose Tube. Love this texture, soft vanilla scent, and the doe foot applicator. On to my evening skincare steps. If I have any eye makeup on, I'll quickly remove that with my favorite Chanel Biphase Gentle Eye Makeup Remover. Otherwise, it's straight on to cleanser in the shower. Avene's Clenos Cleanser has been a long time French favorite. Although it's designed for oily skin, I love using this foaming cleanser to target my hormonal breakouts without drying out the rest of my face. Sometimes when my skin completely throws a tantrum though, I swap back to the Aussie brand Go To Skincare. I always have their products in my bathroom, but they work so nicely together and help get things back on track for me. Their properly clean foaming cleanser is gentle and softening and seems to calm my skin down. I know you're meant to use an oil-based cleanser, then a water-based cleanser when you double cleanse, but I just cleanse twice with one of these and it does the trick. Using a chemical exfoliant two to three nights a week keeps my skin smooth and glowy and gently removes dead skin cells to help avoid congestion and future breakouts. Go-to's exfoliating swipes have been one of my top picks for years. Nothing makes my skin feel instantly soft and smooth like these little pads do. But I also enjoy Ren's Ready Steady Glow Daily AHA Tonic, a favorite since 2018, now in their 100% recycled ocean plastic bottle with plastic that's been reclaimed from the ocean and waterways. This one can be used daily, but because my skin is more dry in winter, I prefer not to overdo it, so a few times a week works well. I don't combine it with go to either, over exfoliating can make matters worse, so I pick one or the other and stick with it for a while. This year I swapped to reusable cotton rounds like these from the Aussie brand Bamboo Face. The only downside is you might find yourself burning through product faster because they're more absorbent and bigger so you put more on. To avoid that I just visualize the exact amount I used to put on a regular cotton round and try to stick to that. Another mist to prep my skin for moisturizer. I recently found Rosen Skincare's Rose Water Face Dew. They're a black owned brand I'll be featuring in my new mini series. You can see the separation between the rose water and rosehip oil in the formula, so I shake it up and it sprays a super fine, softly scented mist. Time for a moisturizer from one of the most famous celebrity facialists and estheticians in Hollywood, Shani Darden. Thankfully, she has her own skincare line, another black owned brand I'll feature in future. This weightless, oil-free moisturizer, mine is an old bottle so the name's changed, is great when I want to remove any chance of my skin playing up. I'm not sensitive to fragrance in products, but if I have a particularly persistent breakout, I feel really confident using this simple light gel cream to give my skin the moisture it needs, but it won't clog pores. For something with a bit more oomph in winter, I love GoTo's very useful face cream. It's really been my go-to, pardon the pun, winter moisturizer since it launched in 2014. I love it so much I use the bigger tub. It's rich, scented with relaxing rose and fig, and so hydrating. Definitely the thickest moisturizer I own, but it doesn't feel heavy or thick once you massage it into your skin. My final and favorite step is face oil, a game changer in my routine in the past two years. Face oils balance out my skin by giving it the nourishment and oil it needs so it doesn't overproduce it. I'm very loyal to a few different formulas like Vintner's Daughter and Le Prunier, but GoTo's Face Hero comes in at one sixth and one half of those prices. It's a magic mix of plant and nut oils with a wonderful lightweight feel so it sinks in like a dream. I've lost count of how many I've gone through. They're one of my favorite Aussie brands, but they have a US website too. When facing a spot or two or 10, thanks for that, unfortunately, I don't have a holy grail product fix. I've tried so many over the years, but different spots need different treatment. Some need drying out, some are much deeper under the skin. So a big box I try to tick is a formula that won't make my skin look worse with dryness or peeling. And luckily, these three don't. The Alpha H Clear Skin Blemish Control Gel is the best smelling spot treatment. And a nice scent is not something you expect in this category. It's a strong eucalyptus 
eucalyptus, one of the antibacterial ingredients in the formula. This 2% salicylic acid gel helps to reduce inflammation and redness, and it's completely clear so you can even dab it on during the day. Ren's Clear Calm Non-Drying Acne Treatment Gel does what the title says, but this 0.5% salicylic acid gel has an orangey tint, so best to stick to nighttime application. This one is a bit more gentle with maritime pine and thyme to calm skin. Those two are good for surface spots, but Rene Rouleau's anti-bump solution, formerly called the anti-cyst treatment, is all about stopping blind pimples in their tracks and those deep, painful spots under the skin. Before trying this, nothing seemed to help with those, but this definitely reduces swelling and they eventually fade away without a fight. If I have played around with a drying treatment or a spot needs some help in the final stages of healing once it's dried out, I like dabbing on a very light layer of La Roche-Posay's Cicaplast Balm. This helps to soothe and repair angry, dry, peeling skin. A few extras to finish that I've been swapping in as needed recently. I usually apply a face mask a couple of times a week. You can catch a lot of different formulas in my face masks video. Lately, I've been reaching for the big guys to tackle breakouts like Aesop's Parsley Seed Cleansing Mask and Caudalie's Purifying Mask. You can hear more detail on those two in that mask video. Definitely need a hit of moisture from time to time, so a hydrating serum sometimes slides into my evening routine before moisturizer and face oil. A brand new formula I've been testing and loving is Sand and Skies Tasmanian spring water splash serum. Tasmania is one of my favorite places in Australia so the fact that this contains soothing spring water from the state and two types of hyaluronic acid means I might as well be floating in a natural lake in the wilderness. Lovely light texture and it feels so refreshing. For even more moisture I'll bring in the masks. Jerlique's Rose Moisturizing Cream Mask is a local Australian favorite when my skin is way too dry and I want to let something nice and creamy sink in. More on this one in my masks video too. Finally the famous Summer Fridays Jet Lag Mask. I've mentioned in past videos that I actually didn't get the hype with this, but a lot of you left comments suggesting I try it as a moisturizer instead, and bingo. I enjoy it a lot more that way, so I use it as an evening moisturizer sometimes when I want a slightly thicker texture. If you fancy seeing an extended version of my evening skincare routine and a real pamper and self-care session with more steps, I'll leave my Sunday ritual video linked below. I'd love to hear about your skincare saviors in 2020 and if you've been dealing with pretty unpredictable skin lately too. What are your old favorites? new discoveries, everyday deodorants, nighttime treats, and holy grail products that never leave your routine. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.